Welcome everyone to the RTV studios on the campus of Martinsville High School for another edition of Inside Martinsville Basketball on the MHS Rewind YouTube channel and WREP 15 Sports. I'm your host, Eric Meyer, joined as always by Artesian head coach Kip Staggs. And again, coach, thanks for joining us this week. It's always fun to talk about Artesian basketball. We've got a lot to talk about with Artesian basketball. It is sectional week and the sectional began last night with round number one games at Center Grove. Martinsville now knows who they will play in the second game on Friday night in the sectional semifinals. We'll get to that in a little bit. Up first though, coach, let's talk about the games last night over at Center Grove. You were there, that opening contest, the host Trojans against the Greenwood Woodmen. The outcome, probably what we ex expected. Center Grove 49-42 victors over Greenwood. But how close that game was, maybe a little surprising. Well, Greenwood, you know, was able to hold the ball a little bit, slow things down. And uh, we're actually in a position to uh, tie the game late. They were it's a three-point game with 47 seconds to go. They had the ball, went down, uh, turned it over, fouled Center Grove. Center Grove goes the line, hits two. Uh, very next possession, uh, Greenwood turned it over again. At that point, the game was over. But uh, the Campbell kid from Greenwood played really well. He had 25 points. Greenwood and Coach Bradburn, you knew coming in they were going to kind of slow things down, but that outcome, was that a little bit of a surprise at how a close Greenwood had kept that contest, or you just chalk it up, hey, it's sectional time, anything can happen? Well, I think a little bit of both. I think, you know, Coach Bradburn does such a good job, and, you know, everybody knows that they're going to play tempo and they're going to slow things down, and they don't really hold the ball, but what they did against Center Grove is that they spread the floor. Center Grove got real aggressive defensively. They were able to get in the gaps, make a few nice plays. And then the, the script was a little bit flipped there in the second half where Center Grove got the lead. Ankeny hit a couple shots for Center Grove. And then Center Grove was not as aggressive. And so because they weren't as aggressive, Greenwood couldn't get the shots they were getting earlier in the game. And so, but that game was five, six, seven points. You know, it didn't get much out of that around the whole game. And, you know, Greenwood, you know, they need to be, uh, you know, pleased with their effort. You know, Center Grove is an awfully good team. When you look at those games, too, as a coach, you always you don't want to necessarily look ahead, but you're always looking at potential opponents. Center Grove would be an opponent in the sectional championship. Should both you guys win coming up on Friday night, are you able to gain anything from what you saw out of that contest on Tuesday? Well, I think so. I mean, you can take a, there's always a few things you can take away from those types of games. And, you know, it's a philosophical game, you know, when, with what Bradburn was trying to do. But I think as much as anything, you take away and you solidify what you already know. And I think that's the key. And so we went uh, also and watched Bloomington North and Mooresville, and we were pretty well prepared for both of those teams, regardless of the outcome. And it, again, it just solidified what we already know. That Bloomington North, that Mooresville matchup, really the one that most people are interested in, that you guys are interested in for the fact that that's who you're going to play, the winner of that coming up on Friday night. But boy, talk about a surprise, not necessarily maybe the outcome, but that score, 100 points, 101-58 in a running clock sectional game in Indiana against a pretty good ball club. Boy, that's kind of unheard of. Well, Daniels, uh, he went off for Bloomington North. He hit five or six threes. He ended up with 27. J.Q. Roberts had 30. So there's 57 points <laughs> with two guys. And uh, they were just on fire. They played really, really well. And there was a stretch at the beginning of the game where Mooresville's up 15, 16 to 9. Next thing you know, it, it's 25, 16. And then to end the first quarter, into the second quarter, there were six straight possessions, basically one or two passes. Bloomington North shoots it, hits a three, basically game over. North comes away with that huge win. You guys played Bloomington North earlier in the season down at Bloomington North in that contest you see this one obviously a little bit more vested interest in watching this and we've talked about it before where you go to games and you see maybe a team get blown out or you're blown out what happens what can you learn from that well in this contest are you able to gain some 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 knowledge or some things like we said maybe it just solidifies what you already knew a little bit or is it kind of hard to judge because of the margin and how how readily North was able to make shots and how easily they were able to get them to go in. Well, I think it uh, confirmed some things. You know, I, I think it, you know, we spent, we've spent the last week since the draw basically getting ready for Bloomington North and Mooresville for that matter. But, you know, we've really spent some time and, you know, we've looked at their last four or five games. And, you know, I looked, actually, I looked last night and we actually have 10 videos in the file of games for over the course of the year, but have their last four and we really kind of studied those. and. And we pretty much know that 
so and so is going to run the right side of the floor and this person is going to run the left side of the floor and they're going to run that little high ball screen action and trying to get Daniels downhill a little bit and JQ is just a tremendous athlete you know he's going to Vanderbilt for a reason and uh, you know they're you know they're playing with a purpose right now and I thought I thought when they played New Albany on Friday down at New Albany in a 20 point win that's a that's a really good win on the road late in the year uh, they got beat by Evansville Wrights uh, the week before and uh, that was probably, I don't want to say a wake-up call for them, but, you know, that was a really good game for them. They got beat by Terre Haute North kind of in that stretch. So, you know, they've had, you know, they've played much better here in the last three or four weeks maybe than they did the previous three or four weeks. When you look at Bloomington North, you mentioned the fact to look at their last several ball games. You're actually in attendance at the one um, coming up on uh, Tuesday night. You were able to be there. The difference for a coach for you to be able to be in person as opposed to game tape. What's the difference in that, and uh, do you have a preference one way or the other when you're doing the scout? Well, obviously, anytime you can see somebody live um, is is very helpful. Uh, you get you get a better sense of the pace, you get a better sense of the heights of players, you get a better sense of the physicality of the team. So you 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 get to understand them a little bit better. You also um, Hopefully, fortunately, if you can pick up a few calls like this is number one, this is two, this is Florida, this is Georgia, whatever they call it, so you can carry that with your scouting report. And I've always felt like if, if we can see you live and we can at least watch you uh, on film once or twice, we'll have a pretty good idea what you do. And your scouts have always been great going back when you are assistant coach. I think you kind of passed that on. That was one thing I remember we would always talk to some of your teams, some of the former players about when you're the assistant, like, hey, we're going to be prepared. We're always prepared. That was on you at that point in time to do that. I know a lot of that has now been passed on to some of your assistants, but the benefit for you actually to be there at that point and be able to sit there, it's got to be great for you to be able to, uh, uh, helpful for you to be able to be there as well. No question. Uh, you know, anytime you can watch the other team play and, again, just try to find out their tendencies as much as possible. And, you know, with Wilmington North, they are such a free-flowing type offense. They're not going to sit down and this person's going to go to A and this person's going to go to B. They're, they're more free-flowing. They've got a little bit uh, – uh, more of a motion spread offense, if you will. They're going to play uh, some man-to-man. -man. They like to go one, two, two, three-quarter court, put JQ on the top. And so they're going to try to control the tempo. They really run the floor hard. I think that's probably the thing that was confirmed last night as much as anything about just how hard they run the floor. And uh, they, really, well, they really get it off the board and they really like to go. So we're going to have to do a really good job with transition and making sure we don't give them those easy baskets and uh, allow them to, uh, to get out in that open court. We need them to play against our set defense. A little bit of a look at Bloomington North, the opponent for Martinsville. We'll revisit that in just a moment, but let's jump ahead a little bit to that first game coming up on Friday night. You'll have uh, the veteran, the winningest coach in the state of Indiana, and J.R. Holmes going against Zach Hahn and Center Grove, who a lot of people probably feel – feel as the favorite, especially what their ranking is, how they played this year, and that they're playing at home. What do you think you're going to be able to expect out of that game on Friday? Well, I guarantee you one thing. Coach Coyle, Coach Holmes, Coach Simpson, Coach Parker, all of those guys down at Bloomington South have been doing nothing but focus on Center Grove yeah. for the last week. And, uh, you know, I'm sure they did a little bit of work on Greenwood and that kind of thing, but I guarantee you they'll be extremely ready for the game. And uh, they'll play well. I, you know, Bloomington South is, uh, you know, they've won 15 or 16 games. And, you know, I expect them to, to go in there and be well prepared and, and take their offense, be a little bit more patient, stay within the, the realm of what they do, not necessarily hold the ball, but they will stay within what they do. And then they get inside that two-minute mark. I can expect them to kind of hold the ball a little bit, spread it more of a – Maybe not quite a North Carolina four-corner Dean Smith scenario, but pull it out, uh, really go for one, especially if they've got the possession at the, at the quarter break or halftime, and then really, really lessen the number of possessions. I think that's probably their goal, what they'll try to do going against Center Grove. And, you know, Center Grove's going to – they're going to be a little bit faster maybe than the tempo that, with Greenwood, but I think it would be very similar. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a 52-50 game. When you look at these two teams as well, obviously, if you want to get the sectional championship, you're going to play one of those teams if you could get the win over Bloomington North on Tuesday or on Friday night. So let's just briefly talk a little bit about Center Grove and Bloomington South before we get to the, 
preview once again of Bloomington North and what do you think or what concerns you most about each one of those ball clubs or what they do well, Center Grove and then Bloomington South? Well, first of all, both teams are extremely well coached and, uh, you know, they've, they've got size. They've, you know, you look at Bloomington South, they've got the Wisely kid who's about 6'8", six, 6'9", six, step out and shoot it. Um, you've got uh, Center Grove that's got good size inside. Uh, they've got shooters to go around them. And, uh, you know, Bloomington South's got some shooters too. So, you know, I think it's a, it's a really good matchup. And, the, you know, we'll, we'll just – we're going to focus right now on Bloomington North, and, and we have a really good idea what Center Grove and or Bloomington South will do or be like. But, uh, you know, I think either one of those teams, um, you know, when you get to 7.30 on Saturday yep. night and you get – you know, you got a little, the stakes are a little higher. And, and, you know, let's be honest, the next two games for us, we're the underdog. Yep. You know, we're, we're the underdog. We're going to be the team that, uh, you know, people aren't going to give us a lot of credit. They're going to look at our lineup. They're going to look at who we've played. They're going to, and they're not going to give us a lot of credit. But I've got to give our guys a lot of credit. I think in the last month we've played really pretty good basketball. I still think, you know, there's probably a few things we could do better. But at this point, you know, we're doing some things really well. And, and uh, just, you know, we want that to continue on. And, you know, we've done a good job this week of, of getting things done, staying healthy, getting healthy, uh, getting some rest, uh, cleaning up some things, making sure we're sharp, trying to get some plenty of shots in, keep our legs, you know, a little bit of cardio, a little bit of contact, but just enough to kind of keep your edge a little bit. And so we've kind of had to control that balance. But you know, any, any one of those teams on Saturday night, we'd be happy to play. And you guys have a little bit of, have to play with a little bit of a chip on your col uh, shoulder, if you will. You're the underdogs coming in. So play with that uh, chip to kind of get to the ship, if you will, the championship. And you'll have Bloomington North coming up on Friday night. So let's get back to the Cougars, the game you guys obviously have focused on. You'll have stuff already for Bloomington South and Center Grove because you've played them already this season and played them uh, every year generally. But Bloomington North, you talked a little bit about what the Cougars are going to do. But let's go over it once again. What can you expect out of their ball club, Coach Spears ball club? coming up on Friday night. So the Daniels kid, he's a point guard. He's going to try to get downhill. They're going to want to play in transition. They really want to get out and go. They've got two nice shooters on the wings with Reed and Lindemann, uh, as, as you may or may not remember, but Reed lit us up for yep. six threes the first time we played him. And some of those were contested. Some we were just right on him and he made him. You know, in the first game, JQ had five points, Lindemann had 10. So we felt like we did a really good job on those two guys. But Daniels got loose. He had 18 or 19. Reed gets 20 plus, and so that was a difference in your game. But in that game, the first time we played him, and I'm going to share this with our players today, the first 10 minutes of that game was all Bloomington North. It's right. 27 to 11. You know, we turned it over on the first two possessions. We gave up three offensive rebounds that resulted in the six points. They got loose on a couple live ball turnovers that ended up being baskets for them. So, I mean, that, that's how they played. I mean, that's, that's how they got that lead. But from that point forward, you know, I thought we played a decent basketball. Uh, I thought we, we shot the ball better. We kept our turnovers down. We defended much better. But I think we competed better at that point. And so from 27 to 11 to a 71-60 loss, you can tell for those, that next two-thirds of the game, we were right in the hunt. Right in the hunt. What are the things that you guys are going to have to do, some keys, if you want to come away with a win on Friday? Well, no transition. I mean, they can't get out and just go down and shoot it. You know, we've got to be able to, to get back, secure the ball, uh, load up the box, uh, make sure that we find those shooters on the perimeter. But transition to me is the biggest thing. That's when they're at their best. And then we're going to have to play uh, well in the half court. Be aggressive uh, in the half court while being patient. Let them guard us a little bit. Again, kind of limit the turnovers or limit the possessions. You know, let this game be in the 50s. You know, we can't let them get in the 70s. So let this game get in the 50s. And then all, obviously, you know, we've got a rebound. I thought, uh, you know, we did a decent job against them the first time around, but we need to do a better job this time around uh, on the glass. You know, JQ is just, he can go get it, you know, but they've got some other guys who can go get it too. And we've got to make sure that, you know, we stay even on the glass, no live ball turnovers, limit their transition. That'll give us a chance to be in the hunt. You guys have not played for almost 10 days coming in. You've had a chance to practice, get some kids maybe healthy as well, ready to go. Kids ready to go coming up Friday? I believe so. You know, we went about an hour and 20 minutes yesterday. Uh, 
We've kept things a little bit over an hour, maybe an hour and a half at the most. We practiced uh, climbing the ladder yesterday, and you know so that was fun. Saturday we took them out to Gaddy's <laughs> for a little, for a little uh, afternoon snack there, and they're all fired up about the buffet. So you know we've tried to keep things light. I think today we're going to have a, a last-second shot reenactment. Right. You know we've had a couple things that have gone our way. Uh, you know, Jace LaFerry threw one in yeah. in the JV game against Whiteland. Uh, Brody hit the shot against Indian Creek. Uh, Jack Wolf threw one in, kind of an awkward shot, turning, twisting uh, in one of our practice scenarios. I think there's another one in there somewhere. So we're going to reenact those okay, good. those plays a little bit, keep the mood light. Uh, we might practice a half-court shot or two. But on top of all of it, our guys are starting to dial in a little bit. And I think we'll be better today than we have been the last few days because we now know who we're going to play. All right, Coach, we appreciate it. Best of luck coming up on Friday night. Thank you. We hope to have a great crowd there. I think, I think it's really going to be a great tournament. One thing I did tell our guys last week, there's a lot of things that are going to be unknown, but the one thing I can tell them is that Friday night, 7.30 at Center Grove will be a loud venue. There will be a lot of people there. There will be a hard ticket to get, tough seat to find, and I think you're going to find a really competitive basketball team playing for the Artesians. Uh, on Friday and as I told them because of the noise they're going to have to communicate on the floor and I'm not going to be able to tell them everything that's going to happen they've got to be able to communicate and work together. They're going to have to try to work together to try to get that win over Bloomington North it's the second game at the Center Grove sectional tip about 7:30, depending on what that opening game does but get out there get out there early watch that first game get yourself kind of settled in and ready to go as the Artesians and North will tip it up in game number two. Coach, as always, we appreciate you joining us. Best of luck coming up on Friday Appreciate night. it very much. That's Thank Artesian you. head coach Kip Staggs here inside Martinsville basketball. The Artesians, like we said, in the sectional semifinal, the second game on Friday night over at Center Grove over the Bloomington North Cougars. As always, I'd like to thank the head coach for coming in. For the coach, along with the students in the intro to our TV class who helped produce it here this afternoon, I'm Eric Meyer. We'll see you again next time inside Martinsville basketball.